Welcome to the 50 Shades of Pain podcast. My name is Dr. Danny Shapiro, and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. If you're in pain or had terrible medical experiences, I will be telling you why the medical system is broken and why you probably feel stuck within it. If you've ever left a doctor's office and thought, what was that? Is that it? Well, then this podcast is for you. I don't think the MRI is that important. Now, this might be a crazy outlandish thing to say, but your scan, your MRI, while it provides good information of what's happening inside, it doesn't really paint you the full picture. For example, I can have someone come in and show me their MRI as showing that there's a meniscus tear. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what's going on. And their doctor said that they need surgery, looking off of the scan, and they have pain, but they want to avoid the surgery, but they have a meniscus tear. What can actually be done? And the answer is there's a lot that can be done because of, <laughs> I've had so many patients come in with that meniscus tear, and we were able to avoid surgery altogether. Because while the meniscus tear is there, that doesn't mean that that's where the pain is coming from. Now, on the flip side, it could very well be where the pain is coming from, absolutely. And sometimes surgical procedures are necessary. But I have yet to see one come through my doors. I have yet to see someone with a meniscus tear that comes through my office that needed that procedure. Now, again, this may be a very bold thing to say. Maybe not. I don't care because this is the fact. There have been so many people who've wanted to get free of their issue without having to go through surgery. And that is exactly what we did. Now, a lot of times when a meniscus tear happens, right, let's say, again, if we're going to go off of this example, you know, they did something, they were doing some kind of sport, some kind of activity, caused pain, they went in for the uh, x-ray, went in for MRI, and they found a meniscus tear. Now, is it possible that the meniscus tear was there before? Yes, also very possible. There's a lot of things that, you know, if you MRI 20 people off the street and they don't have any pain, if you MRI those 20 people, you're going to find something in those 20 people, but they don't have pain, which means what? You can have structural changes and not feel them, which is okay. Structural changes, whether they're tears, arthritis, degeneration in the spine, labrum tears, these are all normal things that can happen throughout someone's life, but it does not mean that it causes pain, right? But you do something, something is, some kind of pain is caused, some kind of pain happens, but then when you go down through the assessment, like again, for everyone who's come in with arthritis or meniscus tears for the knee, we start doing an assessment and I see, oh, this has nothing to do with your structure. Instead, it has everything to do with the muscle that support the joint. Again, you went searching and you found something. And that, that, that's there. Now, can that damage get worse? Sure. But the way it's going to get worse is if you also don't fix the actual thing that's causing you the inflammation, the pain, the restriction, the limitations. So, you know, I've, I, I'll give you a great patient example. I had a patient come in, came in, a young guy, had a meniscus tear, really didn't look that bad. That the, the tear itself was not that bad, but the doctor um, referred him to a surgeon. And the surgeon's like, oh, let's go in there. Let's clean it up. Let's, let's do a, a surgical procedure on it. And, you know, after doing the evaluation, I was like, well, that surgeon's nuts. He just cares about the money in your pocket because that is going to kind of cascade into a different slew of problems. Now, this individual came through my doors, was very active. He used to do squats, heavy, heavy squats with the bar. We're talking three, 400 plus pounds, deadlifts. He used to roll away through the city. He used to be very, very, very active until this knee injury happened. Now, we went from him coming in with a meniscus tear, couldn't really do much, no, not really much bending, roll weighting was out of the picture, lifting was out of the picture. And we got him back to heavy, heavy lifting right where he was before. He was roll weighting throughout the entire city within about four to five weeks, full on back to everything, living how he lived before the injury happened. Now, I didn't fix the meniscus tear. A lot of times meniscus tears in particular, you, you cannot fix them. Right. Once that damage happens because of very bad blood supply, that's kind of there, right? Unless you do some kind of stem cell injection. And even then, like, you know, evidence is a little bit shaky. But what we did was reinforce the joint and fix the issue that actually happened when he initially got injured. 
And by doing that, we secured his joint. And then, even with the meniscus tear still being there, the symptoms were all gone. The strength was back. The security was back. The safety was back. The, the certainty that he had within himself and his own body was back. And isn't that the most important thing that we can do for someone? I had someone come in who had deterioration in his spine. And he was told that, and my doctor says, I, I'm going to need surgery. And I'm like, the hell you do? I don't think so. After doing the evaluation, there was no need for surgery. There was absolutely no need for surgery. Turns out just the muscles that were running through his back and his hips, they were too weak. They were not giving enough support to the joints, to his structure. He was avoiding the activities that would actually be beneficial because the doctor said, hey, no bending, no twisting, no lifting, anything heavy. But that's exactly what you got to do. You got to bend. You have to lift. You, you have to lift heavy. You have to twist. If you take away these essential motions of the body, you're digging the hole yourself. You're rolling yourself into the operating table. You're driving yourself to the hospital. Why? Doctors give and surgeons give such outdated advice. And this is not to paint you know, a broad brush against all of them. It's not, it's not all of them. There's some fantastic surgeons who will look at you and say, you do not, you absolutely do not need surgery. There's some doctors that will say, no, you don't need injections. These injections won't really do much for you. Why don't you go here? Why don't you go do this? Right? Those are the doctors you hold on to for your life because they are amazing. But there's a lot of old, outdated medicine out there where doctors will tell you to stop moving entirely. Same as, you know, back to the knee for a moment. I've had patients who have had knee arthritis and the doctor said, stop squatting, stop, move, stop lifting, uh, limit your activities. What? What? That's what makes arthritis worse. That is literally what makes it worse. The same thing goes for every single joint. If you have deterioration, if you have some kind of damage, you need to sustain as much range of motion as you can. Range of motion brings lubrication to the joint. Stability brings stability to the joint, right? We need to move the area that is injured. The last thing we want to do is restrict with no plan to bring that motion back. If you do that, you're, you're digging the hole. You're digging the hole deeper and it's going to get worse because that's how the body works. It may be unpleasant. It may be scary. There may be anxiety attached to it. There, totally understandable. But motion and movement, reintegration of movement is absolutely necessary for any injury across the board. Again, it's all relative, right? Everyone's injury is a little bit different. Everyone's situation is a little bit different. But I can tell you, one degree of motion or another needs to be reintegrated back into some of life to truly get them through any structural changes that naturally happen over the course of our lifetime. So going back to the original message, what, what I started with is that, again, the MRIs, the x-rays, they don't paint the full picture. They tell you information about what's in there, things to consider, right? Again, unless there's some recent acute trauma where you know, it had some kind of sport injury, some kind of other injury, doesn't matter where it's just on the spot, you felt the pop, you felt the crack, you know, the, then that information is a lot more relevant. But if you're someone who is with chronic pain, you are definitely not your scan. I can't tell you how many times I had people with decades of pain, five years of pain, eight months of pain, come in, show me their MRI. I'm like, listen, this MRI, like, I'm, I'm very appreciative that you brought it, but it's actually, the, uh, this is not what's the problem. <laughs> and then I, I literally had a, this conversation uh, the other day. A woman brought me her MRI and uh, it showed that she had uh, arthritic changes, moderate arthritic changes in her hip. And when I told her, I'm like, hey, your pain, this discomfort is not, this is not your arthritis. She goes, what do you mean? My doctor told me this is arthritis. Uh, I'm like, well, well, first of all, I, you know, I, I understand that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is not arthritic pain. And she, we had this very much kind of uh, almost a little bit combative in the beginning, back and forth, because she couldn't understand why her doctor was pushing the things that he was pushing. 
was which was injections and you know surgery hip replacement that's that's essentially what this doctor was pushing uh why he was pushing a hip replacement when the arthritis was not the problem the patient had a very hard time grasping with that reality especially with me saying it's that's not the problem and it, it's it's kind of this is why i'm saying it's, it's very annoying with certain doctors and surgeons because they they know what physical therapy is going to look like for the most part. Most doctors, most surgeons know that uh, if, if a patient is trying to avoid surgery or, or just general therapy, most therapy will fail. Uh, and that's usually because of the mainstream insurance-based, insurance-run, mill-like clinics that churn and burn. You know, you got 50 people that come in with a hip issue, shoulder issue, everyone's treated the same way, round the clock we go. and that method fails and the doctors know this and they're like well all right we'll go to therapy yeah yeah we'll see you in six weeks because that's not real therapy right and and that's kind of the the doctors don't really know that there's another option out there um and then so like you know when when someone comes in with arthritis they say oh you have arthritis well you're gonna probably need surgery uh now if that isn't the clearest example of, you know, the doctor being the doctor and not the patient, right? The doctor's not the patient. So the doctor doesn't really truly understand what the patient feels um, because someone who would, would not rest and would try to find any, any possible solution for the patient uh, as much as possible um, and be very careful with how they phrase certain things, which they do not for the most part. Um, but again, with this patient that came in with, with the hip arthritis, I got to say, it was really satisfying to find that the problem was not the arthritis. Also, just so everybody knows, if your pain is arthritic, truly arthritic in nature, uh, there's no such thing as um, you walk around or you do something, pain starts, you rest a second, you like, you shake it off a little bit, the pain drops down, and then you can continue doing the thing that you're doing. If that's what's happening, that's not arthritic pain. Arthritic pain, if you think about it, right? What is arthritic pain? It's irritation from the bones grinding on each other, creating inflammation, right? That's like the classic arthritis, right? If you can imagine, right, if something's grinding on itself, that does not feel good. And if once it starts grinding, it's going to grind and it's going to be painful all the time. If you have arthritis and your pain is not constant and consistent, let me tell you, Bobola, that's not arthritic pain. That is something else that is could be nerve pain could be muscular pain this hip pain patient that came to me had a neuromuscular issue meaning that the deep pain that she was feeling was actually nerve related and associated to a nerve compression by weak structures weak muscles that were not providing enough support once we started targeting that starts to feel a lot better so again this is just to show you that it's not always what is shown in the scan. There is so much nuance to this. It's crazy. So much nuance that people don't understand. Uh, when I say people, providers, that providers don't understand and people rely too heavily on x-rays, on MRIs, on, on these kinds of things, especially as it pertains to chronic pain. Again, if you have an acute injury and you broke something, you, you suspect a ligament tear, a muscle tear, that is when these scans really come into play and, and they're very, very valuable. But when we're, when we're talking about people who've been in pain for a long time, um, or, or even just like, again, like a disc herniation, right? You can have a disc herniation and not be in pain. It's possible. Very likely. The, the disc herniations are very common. But please understand that even when you get an MRI report and you see there are structural changes, arthritis, damage of some kind, do not panic. Do not panic. Instead, okay, if there's damage, let's truly see if the pain that I'm feeling is coming from the damage or coming from something else. And that is the best thing that you can do for yourself. The best thing you can do is get it assessed, get a true evaluation from a really good therapist, a really good provider, wherever you are in the world. Okay. And you have to, or even if it's a car, it doesn't matter who you go to. But you must do a thorough investigation. It's truly understanding, okay, 
is what is found in the MRI, is that what's causing me the problem? Or is it something else that is just playing into the picture of that? But there are certain things that MRI cannot pick up, right? Muscle weakness, it cannot pick that up, right? Limitations in range of motion, it cannot pick that up, right? So what is truly the cause of pain versus what is found in the MRI? So that is truly what we should be going after and aiming to find out when approaching our pain and especially after we receive some kind of imaging results, um, whether again, x-ray, MRI, doesn't matter. The concept is the same across the board. What is it that causing you pain? I hope this was a helpful episode uh, as this is something that I encounter a lot in the office. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this on social media. People are always concerned about what is actually showing up on the scan. And I, 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 it's good to do the scans. Believe me, it's good to do them. But again, it's, it's so important to find out, you know, is it truly the cause of pain? Are you about to undergo an unnecessary surgery or procedure? Because of course we don't want to do things that are unnecessary, especially if it's, you know, involving opening up the body or, you know, sticking thing, foreign objects into it. Like we, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do steroid injections. Those are only going to make our body weaker and worse. Um, same as we don't want to rely, rely on painkillers and pain medication. So, um, I hope this was helpful. If you do have questions about anything that I've mentioned, please leave a comment. Uh, and also I'd love to know what you'd like for me to cover next. Hope this was helpful and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.